Hey guys, I have an art journal page to share with you today. Buckle in because it's going to be a long one. <laughs> I'm starting out in my 8x10 um, Dina Wakely journal. And what I want to do is I want to take these die cuts by Tim Holtz. And I want to create some like um, die cut texture on my page. Um, but the problem is that obviously the book isn't going to fit through my die cut machine. Um, and neither is an 8x10 a sheet of paper so I took an 8 by 10 sheet of paper and I cut it in half and then I was able to just run um, the two halves through and I plan on gluing it in and hopefully you won't really be able to tell that there's a line across the middle <laughs> hopefully <clears throat> so I'm gonna add some <clears throat> sorry I'm gonna add some collage page mat all over my um, background and then I'm gonna stick my top sheet down and I'm going to add a lot of glue because I really want to make sure that all those little areas of the die cut um, adhere to my background page. I probably should have used a thicker glue um, like a gel medium or something but that's this is what I have and it's my favorite. Um, so then I'm just going to try to adhere the bottom piece and I'm really going to try to match up those lines that I had cut so it really looks seamless and I'm going to add a lot of glue to fill in kind of any of those um, spaces in between um, so that hopefully when I add gesso on top you really won't be able to see it and I don't think in the end you really can see it unless you're really looking for it so then once the Mod Podge is dry I'm gonna add a layer a really thick layer of gesso on top now this is a Liquitex gesso bottle but that's not what's in there um, I have the regular Blick gesso in there, so it's a little thicker. It's not heavy gesso, but it's a little thicker than the Liquitex. So I'm just gonna um, get a really good coat on there, and then I'm gonna take some Dina Wakely Media Acrylic Paint in Buff, and um, this stencil by Dina Wakely, and just one of those cheapy makeup sponges, and I'm gonna add the stenciling um, to the background. I'm going to try to fill my whole page, my whole background with this writing. And then I'm going to take this other Dina Wakely, um, oh, some acrylic paint and turquoise by Dina Wakely and this other Dina Wakely stencil that has like smaller text. And I'm not going for like whole words or sentences. I'm just trying to get like little bits here and there. Because I like when there's like big text and then little text. I really like the way that looks. And I'm using lighter colors in the background because I want it to be really soft and not overpower what I plan to do on top. And then once that's dry, so um, I got this set of Daniel Smith watercolors from Michaels. It was a set of six. It's like the Prima Tech. So they're like, um, they have like... Um, a gemstone like real gemstones in them and um, now I have some Catherine Pooler Aquatini ink and this is kind of like water soluble like it acts like a little bit like a distress ink and um, I wanted a little bit of that teal color in the background and I wanted it really sheer which is why I didn't come in with the uh, acrylic paint originally um, but then I thought it wouldn't be that bad if I had something a little more like even though you water the acrylic paint down with water it still doesn't get as opaque as like a watercolor would so then okay back to the water the Daniel Smith watercolors so I'm gonna use the amethyst genuine and the rhodonite genuine which is the magenta color and the amethyst is like the purple color and I'm just going to apply color all over my background, just kind of haphazardly until I'm happy. I had just gotten these watercolors at this point, and I just really wanted to play around with them. Um, they have gemstones in them, so they have like this really incredible like sheen to them or like sparkle, like a, like a real subtle sparkle. And I'm also going to add some more of that Aquatini color in there a little bit too. And I'm just gonna go in layers. The bottom layer is kind of drying, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker color. And 
and then before that's dry I'm gonna take some regular table salt and sprinkle that all over the watercolor and the plan is that it's gonna dry around where the salt is and create kind of like rings um, it didn't work out that well because I think the salt is really really fine I think I probably need like a more coarse salt um, but anyway so once that's dry I brushed all the salt away and I'm gonna take my distress crayons or a distress crayon and I want to try to accent some more of that texture from the die cuts because you weren't able to see it that well with just the watercolor and then I'm gonna work on my focal image so this is a collage sheet by Dina Wakely it's the pack of collage sheets that has the faces in it and this sheet has four faces on one sheet and then I'm gonna use the the white version and um, before I stick that down because the tissue paper is white I was afraid I wouldn't be able to see the face design so I wanted to add some darker colors of paint behind there so I got some elephant and then some evergreen and then I added some turquoise and that still wasn't dark enough when I put the face down well I'm gonna try to stick the face down first and then I realized that it's not gonna be dark enough <laughs> So then I'm going to add a little bit of ocean, which is a little bit of a darker color, but still not dark enough. <laughs> and then I go in with some night finally, which darkens it up enough so that I'm happy with how it looks when the, um, the paper gets put on top. And I'm just going to smooth that out with the catalyst tool to make sure my surface is very, very smooth because I plan to um, draw my own face like on top of it, following the lines, but really making it my own. So the set came with this watercolor ground in titanium white. It's supposed to be like a gesso of sorts for specifically for watercolors. So it is white um, and I wanna be able to see my face through it. So I just added a little bit of water. I don't know if that's okay to do with watercolor ground. I mean, but I do it with gesso, so why not? Um, so I'm just going to apply it over my face to give a little tooth to that tissue paper so that my watercolors um, don't like beat up on the tissue paper, but I want it to be sheer enough so that it can still see the face through it. Um, it was a little hard to see, so I'm going to take the black version and keep it to the side as like a reference as I sketch the face back in. So I'm just using a Stabilo Marksol water soluble black pencil to sketch the face back in and I'm trying to follow the lines um, of the tissue paper and I'm also looking to the other sheet to help me but as you can see it really doesn't end up I mean it kind of looks like the original but not really but that's fine because that's you know I was trying to make it look like it was my own and not the same manufactured image you know what I mean so I'm gonna go in with some Jane Davenport watercolors. These are like the flesh tones. And I'm gonna add some of the flesh tone colors. And the Stabilo Marksol is water soluble. So as I'm touching my um, watercolor brush up against some of those lines, it's activating that color and adding a bit of a shadow, which is fine by me. <clears throat> That's why I wanted to use the Stabilo and not like a different kind of pencil, because I wanted that color to activate to help me add some of the shadows with little effort. And then I'm gonna add some of the Rhodonite Genuine in the same color I used in the background. And I really enjoy faces that have like unnatural <laughs> colors to them. Like not just straight flesh tone, like I'm gonna add purple to her face and blue and everything. And I really like the way that looks. So, um, I wanted to try to add a bunch of different colors to her face. So after my first layer is dry, I'm gonna go back in with the Stabilo and try to add some more lines back in that got dissolved by the water. And I'm just gonna go back and forth until I'm happy um, to get that layered look um with watercolors you're really supposed to let like each layer dry before you add a layer on top and i'm not that good at <laughs> doing that 
So um, I was really trying to make sure I dried each layer before I went in with another layer. But then the problem was it ended up getting, like the whole thing ended up getting very, very dark. Um, so I'm just going to go back and forth with my Stabilo, um, adding lines in, dissolving those lines for shadows, and also adding some more of the watercolor in. I'm going to bring the watercolor out from her face so um, the color isn't just like inside of the face lines. It's like it's feathered out from her cheeks and the top of her head. Just to kind of like blend it into the background a little bit and make it look very abstracty. And I probably should have zoomed in a little bit better so you could see more of what I was doing. But I'm just laying down color. And then I'm going to take a white charcoal pencil and try to add some highlights in, in the whites of her eyes, on her nose, on her mouth. And I'm really struggling with her mouth. I just, I don't know what it is. I'm just not good at mouths. <laughs> so I really had a hard time with that. And then I'm going to add um, this charcoal pencil here and there and kind of use my finger to smudge it out just a little bit to add like a real soft smudgy look. And I'm still working at that mouth. <laughs> And then I thought I'm going to try to get rid of the whole thing with water, but it didn't really work. <laughs> so then I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm just going to add something on top of where her mouth is. <laughs> so I got these little teeny tiny alphabets. I kind of feel like they're Jenny Bolin, maybe, but I'm not really sure. So I just added on top of where her mouth should be. It says voiceless. And, you know, because she doesn't have a mouth. Makes sense, right? <laughs> And then I'm going to add a little bit of journaling underneath with my fine-tipped black Posca paint pen. And then I'm going to take my Stabilo and add some journaling like around her head and in between the lines of her hair. I'm going to add a little bit of Stabilo down to the bottom and top corners and then I'm going to take a mechanical pencil and just draw some really loose sketchy lines all around. They're really subtle you can't really see them but if you look closely they're there and then I'm going to activate the Stabilo with water. I really since the face got so dark um, I was trying to kind of like balance that out by adding some darker areas in the corner there but after I added all the Stabilo and all the darkness it kind of seemed like maybe it made the face even darker that way so I probably should have left it because as I'm looking at it the face got darker and darker and darker <laughs> um, so yeah I probably should have left out a lot of that Stabilo um, in the corners but you know we're just gonna call it a moody page I guess and then I'm going to take the black watercolors from the Jane Davenport set and get a really concentrated color to add some splatters just because that's what was out of my desk. So I didn't want to bring out a new product for splatters. And then that is it for my page. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye bye guys.